Our Father, who art in heaven, let's go really slow with it, hallowed be thy name. Okay, thy name, it's hallowed. Well, how does it go on? Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in heaven in the future. Sorry, say, on earth, well, well let, let's go back, let's go back. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Lord Jesus teaches the disciples this prayer at the beginning of his public ministry. This prayer was fulfilled in Jesus' public ministry. So Jesus brought the kingdom to earth in the public ministry and he commissioned us as believers then to live this kingdom life. Do you see what I mean? The tragedy is that so many people in the Christian church have prayed this prayer not understanding what this prayer really means. This prayer is about the kingdom. The central part of this prayer is the kingdom and God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. But here's something that the Lord told me to speak on just now as we were praying it. <laughs> I don't know, do you ever get a download from God in two seconds? He speaks a whole sermon. That's what he's just done to me. So let's go on with the prayer. Where are we? Um, like on earth as it is in heaven. What comes next? Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us... Hold, hold on a sec. And lead us not into temptation. Are you sure that's what it says? Well, why would God lead us into temptation? That's a good question, isn't it? Why, did the, why, did the, why, did, why is Jesus teaching the disciples to pray and lead us not into temptation? As if God would lead us into temptation? See, you, we, you see we have to engage with the text and think, what, what's going on? Why is Jesus saying those words? Here's something I want us to grasp. There is an aspect of what we've just said. There is another understanding that is part of that. It's connected to what we've just said. But it's this. It's that God was understood in the first century and very much so in previous centuries in the Christian church as being in charge. Now, please, everyone, listen. Because we live in a day when the church and people are very much orientated around their own free will and their own decisions. And I believe in that. I believe that every day we can choose to go this way or this way. We can choose to be positive or negative, for example. And, you know, we have choices. So I believe that the Bible teaches that. But what the Bible also teaches, and what the Lord is referencing here in the Lord's Prayer, is this. We read it more fully in the letters, the epistles of the New Testament, and it's, and it's an understanding that, in fact, whilst we have a free will to make decisions, ultimately, we need to see ourselves in God's will. 
And we need to recognize that, in fact, we may think that we chose God, but in truth, he chose us. When we understand that, we have great liberty. Great joy comes when you realize that you've been chosen by God. It wasn't so much you choosing God. He chose you. He saw you, and he loved you, and he chose you. Thank you.